I think it's important that society recognizes that the voice of scientists is an important one. We have to think very carefully about our choices because there's no coming back. I don't think that we're facing the end of the earth, uh, nor do I think we're necessarily facing even the end of the human population. But what I think that we are looking at is an extremely impoverished world, uh, which we could avoid if we put our mind to it. Everyone has a role to play in, in combating the degradation of ecosystems and ecosystem services. There are likely to be some very big challenges ahead if we don't do something now. And one of the things that Diversitas and some interna other international science programs have been doing is to really emphasize the importance of that link between biodiversity loss and human well-being. And it's up to us as a scientific community to demonstrate to decision makers that they have to do something about biodiversity loss because it's going to affect human well-being. So we need to do a much better job at communicating the roles and the values of ecosystem services to people in rural, urban, rich and poor places alike. It is simply wise to understand the processes in natural ecosystems better and to exploit or use ecosystems only to an extent which does not result into a decline of these systems. So sustainable land use, sustainable use of ecosystems is one of the goals of biodiversity research. We want to come to a sustainable management of the environments on which we as humans depend. For example, uh, for the ocean, uh, one of the main recommendations there would be to protect fisheries and put quota this is something that is difficult politically, but it's a matter of survival for the ocean biodiversity and for ocean life in general. We have to start thinking outside of protected areas. Most biodiversity doesn't live in protected areas. The biodiversity that we depend on for our everyday existence actually lives among us in agricultural fields, in urban areas, in rangelands. And it's that biodiversity that we need to protect. There are species out there that need to, just need a bit of help and they'll be able to, to survive. As the globe is warming, the best place for species to go will be toward the pole or up in elevation. We need to set up corridors that are going from north to south or from low elevation to high elevation so that species that are able to, to move, they can move. So humans have got to come up with very, very creative ways to try and help species to actually be able to move. There's a wide range of examples where research results have been turned into application. The most important uh, step for researchers is that they should not only deliver data, but information or even better tools which decision makers can apply. Politicians often tend to want sort of the, the broad scale view. Satellites give you the big picture, and it's really a wonderful tool for communicating to policymakers the changes that are taking place. You can certainly see changes such as phenological changes, the changes of the seasons that we're all familiar with. You can see forests as they move in response to changes in climate. You can certainly see a, a, a deforestation event, even a fairly small scale deforestation event where the trees have just been taken out. The total amount of deforestation, forest loss, uh, that's taken place on a yearly basis. It's for the humid tropics, there's somewhere between 12 million hectares per year and 17 million hectares per year. It's about uh, uh, an area the size of Greece being lost. We have to take a look at where are the hot spots in the world and how can we try to, to get financing to keep them reasonably protected. And one of the places where we can use a high leverage multiple benefit strategy is by protecting primary forests, in particular tropical forests with very, very high biodiversity. There's a lot of carbon in there. If only we could take the hard hat and the chainsaw out of the hand of the poor person who lives in the forest, because right now that's their easiest way to make an income, feed their families and improve their quality of life. So what we want to do is we want to put a ranger hat on them, give them a pair of binoculars and protect the forest and pay them to become 
stewards of the land. So if we could get international agreements to protect the climate that would get a price on carbon, we'd have money available to keep those people living in the forest working to protect and sustain for their children, grandchildren, and everybody the existence of the forest, maintaining the biodiversity of the forest, and keeping the carbon in the ground. It's a win-win-win. I know many regions in Africa where people are very, very aware of the risks. They are aware of a decline of their ecosystems and their productivity, which already happened in the past. And they are worried about all the threatening predictions of climate change. So especially certain African uh, populations are really worried and prepared to adapt to a more sustainable lifestyle. And we have very good cooperation with some groups who even restore their environments for the next generations. There are solutions that the technologies to meet this challenge are at hand. And what we need to do now is muster the political will to take the steps that are needed. We have to go ahead and start and, and trying to make things right. It doesn't matter that we're losing a lot of things already. We can save a lot of things if we start right now.